So with international football starting to adopt the traits of club football, with players switching allegiance at the drop of a hat, I'm sorry Costa, but you're Brazilian, let's take a look at a combined 11 of foreign players who are linked with an England call-up. Carlo Cudicini. At one point does your England goalkeeping situation become so desperate that you start turning to Italians. Once David Seaman retired before the Euro 2004 qualifiers, Sven Joran Eriksson didn't have a lot of top class talent to choose from, Ian Walker was almost as old as time, David James was as erratic as his haircuts, Chris Kirkland's knees were made of cheese, while Paul Robinson could go through seasons looking like he belonged in both the Champions League and League One. The uncapped Carlo Cudicini had signed for Chelsea at the turn of the millennium, and so the FA inquired to whether the 29 year old could have been ready to line out for the Three Lions in the summer of 2004 when citizenship kicked in. Even his club boss and compatriot Claudio Ranieri was backing him, basically admitting that his keeper had no chance against Gianluigi Buffana Francesco Toldo. I mean, he's right, but a bit honest. While flattered, Cudicini ultimately decided to remain an Italian. With a name like that, he'd have stood out like a sore thumb in that dressing room. Victor Moses. When a player represents England at four underage levels, you might have thought the man had made his choice when it came to allegiance. But no, Victor Moses got tired of waiting on that phone call and in 2011 accepted a call up to the country of his birth in Nigeria. He's played over 20 times for the Super Eagles, scoring nine goals and was even part of the victorious African Cup of Nations squad in 2013. Following his recent strong performances for Chelsea, have England missed a trick? Wes Morgan. Yeah, Harry Redknapp, despite what you might think, Wes Morgan is not actually English. At least, not in footballing terms. Despite being tipped by many, including the man who almost took the England job five years ago, to represent the three lines at Euro 2016, the Leicester City captain had actually been playing for Jamaica since 2013. He qualifies for the Reggae Boys through his ancestors, and to be fair, when he accepted the call up four years ago, at the age of 29 and stuck in the championship, I bet he never thought he'd come within a sniff of the England squad. I'm sure he's proud to have played over 30 games for the Jamaican national side, where Joby McEnough of Leighton Orient gets a game. But part of him must wonder, what if he'd waited three more years for England? Sylvain Distan. Sylvain Distan moved to England in 2001 and spent the next 15 years of his career in the country. The Frenchman, a top centre half in his day with Man City, was, yeah, you guessed it, headhunted by the FA when the French national team showed no signs of giving him a cap. You'd have thought Distan might have accepted even out of spite when his homeland were giving caps to Boomsong and Scalacci. Frank Quadru. Ten years ago, Frank Quadru was a highly rated left back in the Premier League. Well, not that highly rated. He didn't get within a horse's whisper of the French team. But still, the French defender claimed that he'd grown tired of waiting on his home country, claiming the French selectors must be ghosts. Yeah, Frank, either that or they had Patrice Evra and Eric Abidal in the Champions League every season. Could be that, or yeah, could be the ghost thing. Quadru added that while changing nationality would be a difficult decision, having signed for Middlesbrough in 2002, he might be tempted by the presence of his old boss Steve McLaren as England manager. Trust me Frank, you didn't want any part of that. You have to give him credit though. Two years earlier the man had rooted around for the remains of his Irish grandfather to shove in Brian Kerr's face, hoping to represent the boys in green. Frank Quadru, yeah, sounds as Irish as they come. Mikel Arteta. If Mikel Arteta was born in any other country in the world, he'd have been capped. How a man of his talents has gone his entire career without playing a single minute of senior international football is insane. But then again, it begins to make a bit more sense when you realise that his career coincided with the most successful period in Spanish football. Arteta arrived in England with Everton in 2005, and after cheering on his compatriots through the TV for five years, was approached by Fabio Capello in 2010. A FIFA law stopped the switch in his tracks, but the Everton man was so desperate to play international football that he even took the case to court, claiming that he was half ready to go to war with FIFA. In the end he gave up, except that he couldn't beat the system and retired without a cap to his name. Steven Nzanzi. If you ignore his second name, Steven Nzanzi might have passed for an Englishman. The Frenchman is flying ever since he left England two years ago, having won the Europa League with Sevilla and now finding himself linked to a host of top clubs. Sam Allardyce, being who he is, was always going to treat international football like any other job, returning to his old club to fetch his former players, refusing to let the obstacle of nationality stand in his way. The shortest lived England manager in history did make an inquiry for the uncapped Frenchman, who had been living in England for six years, but six France under 21 caps gained whilst earning a living in his homeland were used as grounds to rule him out. Lewis Holtby. Lewis Holtby is an Everton fan, son of a former British soldier who had found himself stationed in Germany. Unlike many names in this list, the former Tottenham midfielder could have pulled on the England jersey through a paternal lineage, as opposed to simply lounging around the country for five years. The man has been capped three times by Germany, but had England acted a bit sooner, they could have had the Hamburg midfielder lining up for them. Adnan Yanezai. Remember when Adnan Yanezai scored a couple of goals against Sunderland, lit up a gloomy Man United season, and had about five countries wrestling over 
over his passport. Now he'd be lucky if he receives another international cap in his life. Yanezai caused all sorts of controversy when Roy Hodgson claimed the FA were monitoring his situation with a view to calling him up once he had obtained residency citizenship. The man's name looks like it belongs in a crossword, so to have him line out alongside James Milner at international level would have been a joke. As it happens, he failed to meet the requirements set up by the Home Nations Agreement, which required the player engage in a minimum of five years of education before the age of 18 within the relevant country. He went on to choose Belgium over the likes of Albania and Kosovo, and while on the outset looked a wise decision, it was probably too wise as he hasn't been picked in three years. Louis Saha. I don't think Sven Joran Eriksson quite grasped the concept of this international football business. The man was still treating it like club football when he wanted to bring in Carlo Cudicini, Steve Malbranc, Edu and Louis Saha. Lad, they're not English, have a listen to their names, it might give you a clue. Louis Saha scored in his international debut for France in 2004, but having been in England for five years, Eriksson had inquired as to how comfortable he'd have felt throwing on the three Lions jersey. I suppose anything's better than Emil Heskey. Saha unsurprisingly chose against it, and also added that the idea of not playing well for England and having to put up with insults did not appeal. The man has actually thought it through. Simon Porata. In Ashton Underline, there are three statues dedicated to the only three men from the borough of Tameside to win a World Cup. Jeff Hurst, Jimmy Armfield, and Simon Porata. Yep, you don't win a World Cup in 60 years, so you try and cash in on another country's success. Porata, a man with 48 caps and with a name as Italian as Ravioli, was born in Ashton Underline to Italian parents and lived in the country for the first five years of his life before moving to Italy in 1982. Had he not immediately chosen to represent Italy, which was probably the smartest decision of his life, the man could have been lining out in a midfield with Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard and won absolutely nothing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and also check out HITC7s.